Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, A to Z series, which we're playing now as Eureka. I've played as them before, but I don't remember them at all, led by Port Master Smith. But we got Desolation here. Eureka faced the misfortune of barely avoiding a direct hit during the Great War. Though she took the full force of the strike instead and mutated the natural food source of the area, followed up by pirates, drunks, and horrors. I love them. Eureka's relative isolation meant its main natural resource. Fertile farmland and fisheries were of little use at first, but like so many other towns in history, it found that you can export mercenaries. I love mercs. Sea claws and long fangs. The nuclear devastation that awaited Eureka was avoided, but at a great cost. The missiles were off target, and instead slammed to the waters outside the city's port. While the radiation effects alone were enough to kill or incapacitate many, the hordes that emerged from the disease sea were nearly extraterrestrial, worst of all. Eureka had survived primarily through fishing and trading through its port, making even the existence of these mutated creatures a threat toward their survival. The portmasters held together in this time, a local militia which protected us all. Under the portmaster's guidance, we learned to trust each other, never give up. To rebuild what we could. Well, that'd be interesting if we could rebuild what we could. I want more political power like I always do. Ooh, Sally Johnson. Hmm. But stability. Free stability. You know what? We're going to trust each other. Screw it. The Granite Company. To the town of Old Eureka rode a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him. Didn't have much, too much to say. No one dared to ask his business. Uh, no one dared to make a slip, for the stranger there among them had a plasma on his hip, a plasma on his hip, a regulated industry. There's an old Eureka saying, peace is good for business, war is good for business. The crew from Eureka's marina took control of the town after the bombs fell, but the lands around Eureka were too poor, and too lightly populated to be to rule anyone. Why bother instead? The marina began offering themselves out for protection. A season campaign, then a return home for the winter. In the mere generation, they're known as the Port Masters, a rough and ready band. But the Port Masters had their limitations. Eureka liked heavy weaponry or the advanced schematics and faced the chance of fall falling behind. And so in 2150, a new gang came to Eureka. The Regulators were once the heroes of the Boneyard, a militia company who kept their town safe. But in 2141, the Vault Dweller, corrupted by the honey words of local raiders, turned the town against them. The men and women who fought and died to keep one of California's first towns safe fled as far as they could go, looking for a home. And they found one in Eureka, to quote Caleb, This is a good and peaceful place. Here shall I rest my gun above the mantle. They brought special forces training. Ooh. They taught us how to hold a position. They learned how to live off the land. That's fantastic. Identifying threats, steady air designs, modify scavenger procedures, contact the she, salvage operations, a little size of paradise, open for business, our role on the coast, mercenary expansion, the growing port. I don't want to be bad for money, sell 20 convoys, lessons from our enemies, vision attrition, Baja Bonanza. Um, well, a little slice of paradise. Well, Southern California is a hot-aired landscape. Northern California is a green and pleasant land. They once called the people as Americans apple pie, and the Eureka is one of the few places still to grow them in the region. Perhaps we can encourage immigration to the frontier? Oh, the turning wheel. What is this? The regulators weren't the only Californians to flee to Eureka, seeking a better life. Beginning in the 2240s, the herbologists walked north, seeking a land free of the sheath persecution. The herbologists are called the con artists and charlatans, but that is baselander. They believe that life, the universe, and everything else are a turning wheel. By the scientific beliefs, the children of Dick Hubble try to cleanse the waste of the Nerodines that almost destroyed mankind, but Thrakazog, the pothole, stuck our wheel, and his agent from Arroyo drove us out of San Francisco. To Eureka we came, and Eureka we remain, as in this little town that the Hubologists worked for the great uplifting, and to bring us home to the star father on Quetzal. Down the oppressives. Cool. And we also don't have caffeine. Well, we do have caffeine here, but no coffee. We have a ghost, sour patch, uh, kids, red berry energy drink. Very tasty. Probably not good for you. That's okay. Eureka's mercenary army. Eureka works differently from almost any other nation. Instead of a normal standing army, they're involved in conflicts across the West Coast in exchange for cash and army experience. They cannot train new divisions regularly and have extremely limited industry, but instead raise divisions and equipment through special decisions. Mercs can be sent through the Send Volunteers button on the diplomacy screen, sending mercs. Results in an automatic payment of $40, and leveling up your starting generals provides an additional payment of $25. Only your starting generals and those gained by focuses and events grant the $25 payment. You must have a presence in the nation's port in order to send the mercenaries at the start of the game. Eureka has built a presence from the southern tip of Baja to the Washington Brotherhood's Capitol Hill. Focuses may expand and reach new ports and therefore new conflicts. The Tales of Granite Company, though. Um, you guys are fighting up here. Who do we want to see? The Yakima Nation succeed? We can't send volunteers. Oh. Yeah. We can't even send them to these guys, too. It's too great of a distance. No, that sucks. 
Oh, kiss America goodbye, boys. These were the grandest last words as the rig exploded. His boys and girls fled to Navarro, while Harlanders fled east of Chicago in the capital. Granted that those who couldn't either reach the evac zones or didn't want to. A group left behind, forgotten. Of course, they turned to the wasteland's most precious commodity, war. For three, three decades, the Granite Company fought and died, carefully maintaining failing power armor, as radio carried words of a new president in the east. Some heroes devoted to fighting the immune threat traveled on. Some of them stayed and died, as after years of fighting, there was no one left devoted to the Enclave's dreams. The Granite Company had many customers, but a few rules stood out, but especially just like the dogs of the NCR. The Granite Company drifted through the waste for decades, but there was never a great place to find home. I mean, it was too hot once the Salvatores fell from power. Well, city attracted some, but the NCR garrison made many veterans uncomfortable. Seattle, nice place, but before the Brotherhood showed up, MacArthur, technically, Granite Company committed treason, aiding the Chosen One and killing Frank Hargan. What to do? By this point, Yuri goes home to several groups of mercenaries. What was one more, until the last Enclave troops on the West Coast set themselves up as mercenaries in the bum F of nowhere. Old soldiers never die. They just faded away. Oh, uh, the last Americans, old soldiers never die. Jesus Christ. Recruitable population, negative 5%? Oh my god. Dude, they just faded away, huh? I'll be honest, I really don't remember what this campaign is even like. They just faded away. Granite grew up on the campaign trail with his father, learning from the radical officers, his malcontent grunts, and jaded followers. He piloted vertebrates, coovers, supplied, or souped with Rio soldiers along the river, and learned much from the people, much to his father's chagrin he went, in a way, native, but he never placed roots and never found a home. Granite Company just marched to waste, only constant being ca the capture soldiers, and the taps were fallen. Until chill day in November 2274, where the taps played for Granite, and so passed the last American. For Granite Company, the last of the Western Enclave, it was up to Granite to write the epilogue. He's tenting on the old campgrounds. As years went on, Eureka ran into a problem. The NCR was too darn successful. Who needed to hire mercs when California had a standing army of thousands of men with bloody mechanized units? Protecting Brahm and caravans was well and good, but it couldn't pay the way raiding and vault city once did. The NCR increasingly viewed Eureka as an inconvenience and embarrassment. It didn't have trouble on the border since the deed. Some felt it was only a matter of time before the NCR simply occupied Eureka to restore order. Some mercs and areas moved east or north, while others cashed out. Now, a few wondered if Eureka would have to find some other way to support itself, but whatever Eureka did would attract the NCR's interest, and there was a chance for the Republic would simply solve the problem once for all. Small businessmen always act, or always get the short end of the stick. We have to hide from them too? God dang it, I forgot about that. Scavenger infantry coming. We're gonna need to do stuff here. Raise fishermen division, huh? Metal breakers, more regulators, power armor construction. We'll pay more power armor, but there's a chance the NCR will become more suspicious than we do. Off the military equipment. What better way to show that we're merely a mercenary company than to offer military equipment to the Republic? Aren't we all friends here? Offer salvage from Navarro. For some money in the right hands, a bright eyed man from Shady Sands can be persuaded to look the other way. After all, don't they have bigger priorities? Bribe NCR officials. And for some money in the right hands, a bright eyed man from Shady Sands can be persuaded to look the other way. Of course he can. Bottle caps. Okay, well, interesting. So now can we support you? No, we still can't. Due to a modifier, okay. Who's at war right now, though? Legionary Raider War, Har Sons. Yeah, we don't even want to support them, probably, anyways. Island Watch. No, they don't have a port either. Makes sense. Broken Brothers unite New Arena's families. Look at that. As if that'll last. Oh, so we're on a struggle, so we'll see what happens. Well, a little side spared, I seems pretty good to us, too. Uneasy neighbors. One reason Granite Company settled down in Rico was the sergeant's willingness to work with mutants, a tradition that existed since the fall of the raid. While obviously ghouls and super mutants were potential threats, Granite could be perfectly civil and pleasant, setting an example for those who followed. Indeed, Granite and his portmasters went on more than one successful venture together, especially a spectacular raid in the great 80s raid of 2268. But this is not to deny the two groups have attentions in particular. Grand Company is far less willing to work with the Republic, preferring a standoff approach to their own little town. But for now, this remains a theoretical disagreement. Both parties recognize that any conflict might ruin their little community, and either group wants to invade the, invite the NCR north. Then, hey, some of the ghouls can make a pretty good rot gun. They may be muties, but there are muties. Guns, germs, or steel? Ali, being home to a successful band of mercenaries, provides both protection and a great market of a range of industries. We've had quite a few people express some interest in opening up a shop in Eureka, but who do we favor? Good question. Flags of our fathers. Um, the Shi Navarro is a new rice bowl. A way to break free the NCR's choking embrace. For the Republic, it's a new yet end of the frontier. An untamed wilderness for the Brahmin that bring wealth and power. To Eureka, oh boy, grab a beer. 
to Grand Company. It was home to the Enclave, the best hope, best last hope for the Wasteland, and to everyone else in Eureka, it just puts the bear directly onto the doorstep, a launching point for an offensive the bear makes north. Not that there's anything wrong with their dear friends in Shady Sands, of course, nevertheless. The argument can be carefully made that Eureka should consider taking contracts with the tribes of Navarro, those peaceful people, and if they can't afford a contract, perhaps some sort of long-term agreement could be arranged. God bless the end of uh, Eureka. Going north, the rush is on. The growing growth of the California economy is now to open up a new frontier to satisfy the appetites of Southern California. Up until now, Eureka was too remote and had little to offer to the lands down south. But there was ample farmland for stables and no real market for luxury goods. But that has changed and opens an interesting opportunity. Eureka could grow to rely upon resources and goods beyond manpower and mercenaries, the fish of the sea, the fruits of the land, and perhaps with some hard work the sweat of its people's brow. But to do that will require more settlers. Grand and Portmaster Smith as the strongest forces in Eureka are in an impasse. Poor Master Smith believes all are welcome and would encourage everyone er, to immigrate, but Granite believes that Eureka should limit immigration to a respectful sort, hardworking, industrious, relatively successful peoples. We're not a legion, we have no need to serve. Ultimately, he will prevail, and perhaps, just perhaps, Granite could send some feelers out to old friends. The more the merrier. Uh, all are welcome. A selective and heistments will get a better class of citizens. Ooh, I like that. Welcome home, my fellow Americans. Ooh. Well, let's go with all are welcome. The more the merry. We're going to go with that route for now. What do we got here? I want to go to New Crossroads first. And Research Advisors, that would be bad. Daily Army XP. I want the political power king, god dang it. Reddings Investment. Reddings Barons are a lucrative source of capital investment. And we received offers from some from some folks there. And uh, Supermean. Supermean Industries. Huh. Our concept becomes economic. No, that's worth it. Wow. Actually, technologically, we actually have a super advanced power armor. Wow. Uh, that means we have to use it then, don't we? We get more weekly stability here, too. I like that as well. How much does it take to get this extra 10%? It's only 100. All means Nevada to them. Nevada heard a call. The people of the region heard our plan to develop the Rurikis economy, and we have three groups with interests. Modoc sends a farming delegation which will support our agricultural exports. While City sends some citizens, cutting edge researchers who may alas just like our gold population. And Reno sends some well funded uh, manufacturers. Who do we pick, of course? Farming ain't much, but it's honest work for other people. Well, it's to have some friends and move there. Ooh, that's pretty good. Obviously, we should work with the only group with resources. I think I'm going to go with Elites for this campaign. But that's free resources. Do we hit need it? Uh, we're okay on resources. Uh, you know what? We're going to boost up the elites. As much as I want to do the... the nah, I don't want to do the people. Intellectuals are fun. Regulars are good. We're going to stay with Port Master Smith, maybe. We'll see. And... A land Doctrine. Conventional. Maybe we can do Outsider Warfare, too, huh? Heavy special forces. Trooper warfare. I mean, this is an okay doctrine. It's not bad. It's just not great. Purity. Our infantry breakthrough. Flexibility of movement. Get more special forces. Experience soldiers' losses goes down. You know, we're going to go down this route anyways. We'll see where we end up. Fifty-two. We're gonna go get more stability. We need it. We have to have it. So after this one, roll on the coast, identifying threats. Battle of oh, oh hello, a bodega. Seems that the bear might be reaching its limits. The free folk and Shia are now up in arms against the Republican forces in Navarro, rolling back the insider's grip in Northwest California. It's triggered a crisis in Eureka, where the town's residents debate what to do. There's some who wish to remain neutral, but the other point out that free folk could be a valuable proxy for Eureka and help push the NCR south. Navarro could be the base to show California what it might have been, if only the NCR had squashed everyone else who thought and dreamed of a different way. We're mercenaries, not empire builders. You lose access to several parts of your focus tree and anger the NCR. But if you prevail, you unlock new tr uh, tree about team the bear. Huh. Northeast California burns today as the skirmish between Van Graaff mercenaries and Shi settlers in the coast city of Fusang left 21 dead. Orders collapsed in the NCR Navarro's territories. 
Settlers along the Xi in the central tribes of the region have both taken up arms against the local garrison, successfully taking control of the east and south of the frontier territory in what has been dubbed as the Navarro Crisis. As the Xi and Sian Yurikir fiercely debate intervention, open warfare in Navarro is expected to commence, and have to oppose a serious threat to diplomatic relations between the three factions no matter the outcome. Now's our chance. Uh, Bodega? Navarro. Busong. Free Folk. Uh, but if you prevail as a member, we could join the NCR. <coughs> Contact the Legion. Begin army reforms. Destroy the NCR. Invade Umbra. I don't remember what I did last time. Not gonna lie. Finish army reforms. Begin expansionism. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, see, you know, I'm gonna go with mercenaries. We're not empire builders. We're not gonna get involved. We still have sent them in divisions anyway, so. We want these guys to lose. Fusong is not bad. I could be completely wrong here. Free folk? Um, payment received. Volunteers have been sent out currently en route to their future hosts. Already we received the down payment promised to us, yet the spoils of war are ever bountiful, increasing the capabilities of our generals will lead to future spoils and whatnot. Dubious prospects. Raise Portmaster Division. Bribe NCR officials. The business of Reading is business. As Eureka's economy opened, three investors approached city leaders with a plan. Two twins, Olivia and Cordell, came with their revenues. A battalion of clerics, guards, builders, beyond the two unique plans. Olivia's promise was simple improve the infrastructure, improve the exports to New California, her brother. A student at Vault City University proposed looking for gold. After all, Reading had once had some, and the region was what source of the gold centuries ago. Surely some was left? But there was also a third proposal, one that discussed it. Granted, a super mutant known as Francis claimed that super mutants from Broken Hills could use their skills to run the mine. From a strict cost benefit analysis, the mutants would be an invaluable tool. Hadn't those monsters killed thousands, though? They look more elites, less intellectuals. Francis, Olivia Hunt. Two Siffies, that's nice. And get steel. I like fancy Francis. What big arms they have, the better to lift heavy machinery and move it from place to place. Whatever our criticisms, it's clear they've been able to do more than, far more than smooth skins would alone. Our role in the coast. Didn't find threats. Too much time spent focusing on our own plans blinded us to our neighbors. Thankfully, none pose an immediate threat to our freedom, but that doesn't mean we can't be cautious. Fancy Francis, huh? Miss Madiket, huh? Scavenger. Oh, that's pretty good. Nice. Well. Is it like here or, or so? I don't know. Something like that. Help the fan for now. Maybe. I'm more focused on killing off the NCR territories. That is the most immediate threat that we've got. So, you kill them off here. We'll do whatever we can. Alright, Chris, we could use more vampire now too, but still. Actually, what do we have up here? Uh, but organization and attack would be nice. Military theorist. Ooh, fire team weaponry. But we need the theorist first. First and foremost. Can you help at least just destroy them? Nice. There you go. Rusty hooks, huh? Spark. Okay. 
Let's go there. Any upgrades we like? Here, become inspirational. They're all gonna become inspirational. And contact the she. Well, the Navarro territories are an important source of raw materials for the Shi due to the close relationship with the NCR. We may not be able to match that same level of relationships with this mysterious faction, but we could certainly benefit from approaching them. Follows the apocalypse. If you want to put this, please go ahead. Well, we let everyone in, so it's fine for now. We're a bunch of mercs, but they can help repair ourselves and whatnot. You know. There you go. You go in here. Boom. Beautiful. All right, so that's the case. You know, you're both here. Just go here. There you go. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, spread out a little bit first. It's fine. Nice, there you go. And... you there? Nice, there you go. It's only a single division. I met you in a bar in San Francisco. San Francisco's long served as a gateway to the north, and in happier times, serves a popular spot for Navarro's leave. Now, Eureka helps attract investment and trade from the city with several factions available. The Shi are always happy to trade for more produce and limber, and offer their technological services, but they are never friends of Granite Company's predecessors, convinced that the Enclave have almost nuked San Francisco. The Hubologists, for their part, know much about aviation, but not too much, and we must admit their religious views are strange even for the wasteland. Still, they would work with the Granite Company. Who does Eureka pick? Listen to go to the Emperor? Sure, there's something to do with this Starfather business. Yeah, we'll do that one. Uh, modify uh, scavenging procedures. As our growing field of operations requires a wider selection of clients and areas of development, we are forced to reconsider many of our scavenging practices. They served us well this far, but require additional reforms in between our armies. Absolutely. What do we got down here? Political power and that stuff? Yeah, why not? Come on. Jesus Christ, are you done yet? Jesus Christ. Oh, if you want to move like that, so be it. Whatever. We're about to get encircled here, probably. It's alright with us. It happens. Better citizen of the net wins the election. We don't care. That's fine. Warrior training is nice. Sure. Very good. Good. You should be done by now. Nice, there you go. Ah, uh, what do we got here? Listen, Vral territories are gone. Gives them more of a buffer state against the NCR. Guns quickly. Took only 15 days. 30 extra guns. Do you want to go faster? Or do you want to get more? Buzz are established. That's fine. Hmm. Are we missing anything here? We could use more of everything, really. We don't have that kind of node, though, unfortunately. Hmm. Scavenging efforts, motorized. Well, I'll get this at least once. Why not? Rapid repair. Scavenging support equipment only took 15 days. Take it all. The event that occurred from the scavenged support equipment now include a third option obtain equipment from the other two options. Because this costs quite a bit. It takes 30 days for this stuff. 
to get more guns quickly. Scavenge planes. Infantry equipment would be nice. City air designs, maybe? Our scavenging has turned up a number of blueprints and texts relating to the functions of airplanes. Miraculous contraptions capable of remaining in flight and using engines strapped to the air wings. Sounds impossible to many, but this technology could have military applications, if used properly, of course. No ships, it's fine, whatever. We need some power armor. Holy crap, do we need power armor. Come on, boys, move down there. Special forces for now. All right, so you guys are almost there. We're gonna work as needed. That's good. Manpower would be nice, but we can leave that. It would be nice to have vertebrates too, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Look at that. Fantastic. Followed to establish themselves, very nice. Woodworking is good. Sufficiency gain is good as well. Help them out there. Go there, help them out. Hello, no, 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 no. You go right there. And expert salvagers. 200 years of keeping a technological civilization with only an oil rig, a series of military bases, and a glorious beacon of tomorrow in the American Midwest wasn't easy. Good thing we've got some experience then. You're gonna go back here and you're gonna kill that division off. How absolutely dare you. Kill yourself. <sighs> kill yourself here too. Up the out. Yep. Free civvies are good. Research speed, medical technology. Eh. Looking alright. Bodega? We can take it. Why not? Just strike out now. Of course, we have no uh, thing here. The helmet. And go in. See what you can do. Nice. Let's go there. And what else we got? Planes? Yes, please. Wait, hold on. Abologists. Crazy people. What else we got here? Such speed, technology, no, no. Outside volunteers, outside our auxiliaries would be nice. Major businesses, I'm gonna wait for that. Manufacturing, planes, followers of the apocalypse, it's not bad. Construction speed, scavenger wheel, we need him anyways, or her. I assume it's a guy since Francis is usually a guy's name. Usually, not always. Never met a woman named Francis, but still, super mutant industry. What big arms they have. Fantastic. And then, our old coast. Those who approach us with offers of employment often have striking similarities. A sour smile. Impatient, fidgeting, and overwhelming holier than thou attitude permeates our employers. They pay us, and we offer them nothing but our temporary loyalty and expertise. Victory in Navarro. The Chinese and Bear both saw the conquer Navarro. The chief for grain and lumber, and the bear for Brahmin, but Navarro was their home, the last American outpost in the West. We cannot fly our flags openly not yet, and the bear will come, if anything. More focus on the region now. Already rumors and recrimination fly whisper to the Enclave's power armor in the woods. We lack the vertebrates that once scour the skies, and face states with air forces of their own, but at least for a day the American flag will fly freely over Navarro. We're back, and this time we won't leave. Welcome home, Commander. Oh. Oh crap, we actually annexed him? God, I love caffeine. Holy good fathers. I didn't realize we were going to get that, actually. Let's have pacification. Eradication is nice. I'll hold this skull. Look at all these guys. Uh, oh crap. Anything for a buck? I mean, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, but still. Militia? Hot garbage, man. Well, I'm glad we got it, but uh, it's going to be kind of costly to maintain this group, isn't it? Free folk. Victorious and Navarro. Following the withdrawal or destruction of the remaining opponents, the tribals of Navarro, banding together as free folk, have emerged as the undisputed controller of the Navarro frontier, seizing it from the NCR. A culmination of war. 
uh, of independence after fighting broke out between the Shi settlers, the NCR garrison, and the native tribes of the region. The Free Folk now faced the challenge of defending California's last frontier from the major powers of the region. Rumors persist, however, that the tribes were supported by, and perhaps even controlled by, mercenaries hailing from Eureka to the north. The domestic reaction of the NCR to this loss, as well as whether the Republic will make another attempt to regain the territory, remains to be seen. We've proven ourselves. Yes, we have. Oh, crap. Did we do this? Does that mean... How are we supposed to, like, hide away from them? 84 days? No. Hide activities? Well, as we got our guys back, I guess. Thank you, Lieutenant Scott Blair, for your services. Thank you very much. Refined warfare is good. Um, Supermarine industry is good. Got another deal. I don't need new management. Oh, this completely changed. Everything here. Maybe we weren't supposed to do this. Are we, am I doing the exact same thing I did last time? I might be. Hmm. We get cores. We need that one. Under new management. Together, regulators, port masters, illiterate, savage tribals, and granite company drove the NCR out of Navarro. A true inspiration for av all advocates of tolerance, but now we need to figure out how to handle hundreds of miles of territory. Yeah. We really do. Uh, settlers or settlers? Navarro is still a rich, untamed frontier, but how do we get settlers to come here given that we just had a civil war and drove out the NCR? Brahmin ranchers, huh? New generation. Remove a mercenary army. Uh, yeah, well, at least we need the cores first. Gunrunner deals. A direct source of weapons is now necessary for our forces. Perhaps we could persuade the gunrunners to set up shop here, fix up uh, a Carson mansion. Since we can no longer allow scavenging to build up our army, we must promote local development. The first step is to refurbish the old Carson mansion, a palatial Victorian home, into the headquarters for a little town. Campbell removed from office. Oh boy. And a stark rejection of the trend of rising militarism and corruption within the NCR, President Campbell has been removed from the office following a vote of no confidence by the NCR Senate. Starting an investigation into the Navarro crisis, Campbell's support base was rapidly whittled away by a series of dramatic Senate hearings which exposed the corruption. Um, unchecked imperialism and widespread nepotism that occurred under its term. As leader of the opposition, Boneyard Senator Algood Murphy has been selected by the Senate to serve as president for the remainder of the term. Time will tell the newly inaugurated President Murphy will be able to deliver on an ambitious anti-corruption platform before the onset of 2278 federal elections. Let's see what he, this one does in indigestion. With an eviction Navarro, we pulled off a miracle. We drove the NCR back and claimed Navarro as our buffer. Granite's men are setting up shop in Navarro, but we're running into a bit of a mess. There's still thousands of people in the territory who hate each other in a land still with vast potential promise. If we withdraw from the region and the NCR, the Shi will simply pour back in. And of course, if we manage it properly, everyone in Eureka will be set for life. What do we do? I'd assign, an, assign, I'd assign up for nation building. Hey, get some, a free core, though. I'll gladly take that. Here's the Polar Soviets. Goodbye, Polar Soviets. Uh, Anything else here? No, 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 yes. Um, cool. So, how are we looking here? Looking, that's, actually we got a lot of compliance here. Very good. Very, very, very good. Technocrat, ranchers. Oh, cap expenses go down, which is very nice too. Do we want to help out these guys? Can we help them out? No, we can't. The distance is too great. God dang it. Road breakers? Troll worm. And they don't even have a port, so that doesn't help us. Um, I would like to get to a funny, a well kept army, probably. Come to Navarro before Navarro comes to you. If we want to rebuild a VAR, we need to do so in a pluralistic manner that benefits every stakeholder. In practice, this means making sure everyone gets a slice of the California cake. But what to do? How do we tame this wilderness? The portmasters uh, will simply open the frontier to all who want to come, including all those with an eccentric past. The regulators wish to import slaves for the crash industrialization and mining and profit off their labor. Granted, for this part, wants to attract a better class of citizen by emulating the vault city model, which we would pursue. Alright, so am I going to be locked out of focuses here if I don't do stuff correctly? Coming home. Chiefs Corps Territories, Arroyo, Back in Black. Ooh. Current Ruling Party's Ruler. 
God dang, I think we're going down the same path that I did the original time. Ports without end. There's people. Welcome home, new citizens. Ooh, ruler. Ooh, you get one arm, new arms workshop, which is not bad. But electricity seems pretty good. Yeah, we'll do that one. You know, at this point, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing anymore. I'm just here for a good time. Navarro's workshops. Learning from the past. Back to school. I do want to do a new generation, though. But we're going to do this one first. We need those arms factories. We badly need them badly, 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 badly. Do that one. That's good. Wait, so what happens with this one then? Hide activities? What did that cost us though? That's my question. Um, stability? Okay, more stability. That takes up a lot of cities, but whatever. New generation. What makes a man turn mercenary? Uh, lust for gold, power, um, loyalty to a forgotten cause. Perhaps he was with a hard neutrality. With proper funding, we could we could those in the wasteland who are willing to fight for any or all of these causes. Chief Thrad's dream of unity and Reno has gone up in smoke today. As uh, during a minor ceremony where all prominent family heads were present, a bomb exploded, of course. <clears throat> well, the explosion itself was small. The after effects were severe. The bomb was stuffed full of FEV and nuclear waste, which immediately spread to the surrounding area. With a dangerous material release, this detonation was enough to fatally poison everyone attending. Except for the super mutant, uh, Broken Brothers, and power vacuum left by the death of Mr. Bishop and Christopher Wright, the leaders of the city's two pro most prominent families plummeted into Reno into chaos. An obvious power move. Mama Van Graaff responded by sending out her mercenaries who convinced the remnants of the rights and bishops to follow her, an attempt to which was foiled by Thrad after days of intense fighting on the streets of the city. With no families left to challenge him, Thrad has declared martial law proclaiming that humans need supervision. Things are getting interesting in Reno. Cool. Hey, military factories, I love it. Uh, get one more of those, it's nice. We'll do that. Capitol Hill's fallen, interesting, okay. Bone dancers, multi purpose equipment. There you go. Malt station, you don't have a port though. Oh, with the cause. Nope, they're probably too far. Add activities, bribe them. What are you lacking here? Cool. And they'll do a new generation next. And I want to learn from the past, maybe. Or maybe a role on the coast. Yeah. Uh, those who approach us with offices of employment often have striking similarities, a sour smile, and impatient fidgeting, and overwhelming holier than thou to permeates their employers. They pay us, and we offer them nothing but temporary loyalty and expertise. What's not to love? We might actually go down this way, maybe. We'll see. God dang it. Because you never know when these are going to fire, so I want to wait for that. Mercenary expansion? Simple logic dictates the more conflicts we partake in, the more we stand to make. Therefore, our current range is limited to the immediate west coast. It's far too limited. Establishing supply routes through rivers and seas can broaden our horizon significantly. Absolutely. You get some more water, which is not bad, and a free building slot, which I do like, actually. I'm gonna do that. The Den. Wow. Northwestern Brotherhood now. Yakima, Rib Breakers, Troll War, and Kemal, Bone Dancies. Mexico. You know, all these good places. Sure, I'm not sure what it takes for us, but whatever. Our role in the ghost. What else is next? Brahmin Ranchers. One way to get on the NCR's good side would be to allow the Brahmin barons to eat, uh, lease land ready. Those would be somewhat controversial with the tribals in the area, but we'll look out for their interests in a way shady sands and not. All, all good merchants are smart enough to recognize that half of a loaf is better than none. Rapid repair makes you power armor. Also take over Petro Chico, that's pretty normal. Rogue vertebrate engines. Ooh. will return additional 20 sets of power armor. Additional 15 usable planes. It doesn't mean vertebrate planes. Still. Siege Hidden Valley, there you go. Everyone's killing each other, I love it. Uh, well. Let's go with that, I guess. Yep, stuff's fine. 
River Convoys, expand and reach the following states bordering in Oregon. As of now, our supply ships are only built to dock at major ports and would have serious trouble reaching our mercenaries through rivers. We can take time now to redesign our ships in order to better accommodate rivers, allowing us to establish a presence deep within the rivers of Oregon. Yeah, you might as well. Oopsie. Didn't mean to spend the 25 army XP, but whatever. There you go, too. An even more savage land awaits for mercenaries in the North Capitol Hill. The Raiders here are well known for the barbarity, and will certainly welcome additional help on the raids. Hopefully, lessons will be learned in this frigid wasteland will prevent us from becoming their future victims. Bound for Mexico. Mexico isn't far from the southernmost uh, position of the Baja. An expedition there will no doubt incur some difficulty, seeing as the language barrier could limit our ability to negotiate with potential employers, but the rewards could pay dividends if the region is as unstable as some predict. A growing port. Sell convoys for cash. That's pretty good. Umbra. What if we helped you out instead? Um, payment received, thank you. I'm just here to screw everybody up. Including myself, apparently. Uh, here, here's some guns. I'm not sure what that does for us at all, but whatever. Shadow Jack Churchill, huh? There you go. Because if we stay there, we could probably get a lot of experience. That's fine. I'm literally just here for a good time. No other expeditions. Free from north to south, bound for Mexico. That's fine. It's good. We'll do that one. We're here for the army XP too. So, whatever it takes. Resource production. A little ahead of time. Anything else we really want here? Ooh, XP lost. Yes, I like that a lot. Let's go in there. Ooh, our infantry's gonna get beaten up pretty badly. Nice. Get that XP, boys and girls. Decode signal's good. What else we got? Another trust society. Mm, don't really want to lose any war, any stability. We only 64%, which is not a ton. It's a decent amount, but not a ton. <sighs> River convoys, yeah. Lower Snake River expansion. We could, or we could go salvage operations, or we could learn from the past. But we still need a new generation, so we'll probably do this one instead. Look at that manpower. Holy cow. Bound for Mexico, once these guys start attacking us again. We're not going to attack here. That would be suicide. And we're not about a suicide. Not yet. Someday, maybe. Not today. Uh, guns quickly. Honestly, I prefer guns in bulk. If we're going to do any scavenging, we're going to do it large. It only makes sense to begin by reforming our approach. Oh, look at this. Uh, to scavenge infantry weapons, the backbone of our army, we could either prioritize scavenging a large amount in the, each trip or scavenge them quickly. It's a little ahead of time, so we're not going to do that yet. Recon might be ideal. Elder Francis forms the San Francisco chapter. Would you look at that? What else we got right here? That's a little ahead of time. Today, the Brother of Steel saw their influence in California grow as Elder Francis announced that she would be henceforth be led by the San Francisco chapter, ending a sustained period of ideological debate in San Francisco. As they're both martial gangs in the city dissolved, the Shizan appropriately petitioned Los Cells for assistance in restoring order in the city, effectively placing their bay under brotherhood control. Elder Francis, the leader of the San Francisco chapter, rose to power with the support of oops, uh, the existing Brotherhood delegation in the Shi, promising Brotherhood assistance, the, the ever-threatening NCR, under their reign, of course. Technological preservation and the construction of a series of defensive bunkers are expected to become a priority of the Shi. The Brotherhood secures foothold in California. Good for them. What happened down here? Anything? Oh, that's what I immediately help them out. Yes. I'm surprised they're not attacking us at all. Power armor's looking okay, but still. If we were to leave and come back, would that work? Could you bait them into attacking us? Ooh, scavenge airplanes. If you want to build this, please go ahead. Boom. New generation. Range, more chance for attack. Oh, political power, though. Oh, uh, what do we want? Now, editing of all templates of this country or training or disbanding units belonging to them. Mutant threat. Ooh. Eureka's, Packers, and a Royal's core territories. Trading tax. Mm. 
the um, Umbra, oh, Umbra tribals, are northern neighbors. Umbra has recently begun to modernize and adapt from tribal and animalist to semi-industrial nation. This hasn't been an easy road for them, as their current involvement in the affairs shows. Whether their instability will soon become a boon or bane for us can only be shown by time. Sure. This is the only one ship, which is fine. Oh, what else we got here? Cultural advisors. Ooh. War sport, monthly population, recruitable population factor, equipment capture ratio. That's interesting. Hmm. Who do we have over here? Power armor proponent. More attack. Production cost, more speed. I like that, but I like this person too. Healing powder. Here, get a ship, because we can. You, switch it to here. You, switch it to here. Because I wonder if these two can do anything here. Yes, I can. Help push out a little bit more. That's a very nice river to defend around. Oh, could you actually help out here too? Yeah, you might as well. Investing our gains. The wealth we've amassed is of little use if its sole purpose is to buy more equipment. Our people have risked their lives and wealth to fund our mercenary expeditions and will surely be able to repay them for their generosity. What is this? Unlocks his decision to repair power armor at the risk of alerting the bear, but who cares what they think? Hey, look at that, nice. The thing that XL was once, once feared throughout California, and now we are reduced to whatever salvage we can find. Still, with proper funding, we can always hire salvagers to augment our reserves. It can't hurt, right? Right? I like throwing a lot of guys in our guys. Nice. Probably playing this all wrong, but you never know. Actually, you guys might know. I don't remember. As it's been a while since I played this campaign. Hmm. Hmm. Physics Meltry. What if I said you two? Come here. And let them get attacked, and I'll just send divisions out. Help him out. There you go. See? I knew that would happen. Very nice. Wow. Forcing the attack. Jesus Christ. Absolutely insane. Oh, look at this. Beyond Honduras. Our warriors have heard tales of a raider-led anarchy present throughout Central America. Finding stable clans may not be possible in the jungle wasteland, but conducting raids of Rome could yield serious benefits. Proper uniform for self. I'm glad to see that they're trying. Love it. More special forces. Stability, sure. Hello, what do we got here? Special forces, huh? Oh. Nope, wrong one. I thought we were making special forces equipment. I guess not. There you go. Odd. But now where's the max sec one? Because that just unlocked, I think. Maybe not. Maybe it was here somewhere. But salvage operations, you know there's some old ships that seem to wash up on shore outside of Rica. Perhaps we can take them apart for metal? I bet we can find a use for it though. Uh what do we got here? Building up roads, I mean that's nice. We could build up infrastructure too, eventually. Eventually that would be a good goal. Um, there you go. Hmm. Can you actually push out here? Long bolt holes, November, just in case get these guys started on something here. There you go. 
Navarro's workshop. So the NCR desecrated the armories and workshop to Navarro, but there's no reason we can't get them up and running again, is there? Local manufacturers, fix up the old town. Yuriko once had a charming town downtown, which is a center of commerce and industry. With some proper renovations, it could have it again. Learning from the past, Granite Company once worked for a force with fusion plants in the best quantum mud pie west of Mississippi. The regulators once held sway in the richest town in Cal New California. But now Yurika must get on by scavenging and limited equipment, like everyone else. Surely there's someone who will work for us. Surely, surely, surely. Nice job, guys. Doing a great job down here. Need more political power, though. Resource-wise, we're looking pretty good. Making some planes, get some dynamite. Army XP would be nice, but still, whatever. Wow, we got a lot of divisions here, don't we? Oh boy. Oh, it was at war with them too, huh? Look at that. Oh, with Max Sec. That makes sense. All it does is make sense. <laughs> level 5, became level 4. Fantastic. Need more money. Get in there, boys. Fixing up the old town. Enclave manufacturing techniques would be nice, but still. Oh, we're going to get this one. Navarro's workshops. Eventually, we're going to do pilot training procedures. For the need for the equipment itself, we're in desperate need of uh, to train pilots on how to use it. Sadly, few Eureka had any knowledge of planes a few months ago, making finding suitable instructors difficult. I suppose we'll have to improvise and clear abandoned airports. Most of the nearby airports date from the great, before the Great War and have become infested with all types of vermin or littered with serious debris. Clearing and renovating these spaces um, <clears throat> will allow our scavenged planes to be launched from them. Or launched from them. Go ahead, that's fine. Oh, that sucks. It's fine, though. Whatever. Oh, now you're, you're attacking them. Of course, they did exhaust themselves pretty badly. So... You could try. You're probably gonna die. I think I want you to come up here too. Everyone's trying up here. Oh, you know what? You're gonna hold then. That's fine. Power armor might be okay by itself. Oh, what happened to? I guess we had a scavenging program. All the other stuff down here. I wonder scavenge for stuff. Well, crap. Well, I guess we bypass all that stuff. Uh, mining equipment for Redding? While we lack the manpower needed to mine the lands around Navarro, and frankly, we're not sure if there are any resources, Redding might be willing to use our engineers for the right price. You can help out here if you really want, I guess. You might still be able to break over here. That'd be actually very impressive if, if we could. Power armor construction. We'll prepare more power armor, but there's a chance the NCR will become more suspicious if we do. Currently, the NCR is mobilizing. Oh. Not ideal. Multi tech construction. Come back over here. Do that. Still fighting for this piece of dirt. Hey, good job, guys. If anything, if you do this, it would make it easier for us to hold the river there. Packers on Umbra. Where is Umbra? Oh, Umbra. Oh, Packers. Hello. Reading contracts. Looks like whatever Algood Murphy thinks. Reading's industrious and mining conglomerates are glad to hire us. In a way, these fools will sell the rope we use to hang them. Fortunately, we'll use a plasma grenade instead. Hmm. Rapid repair. Much of the support equipment that our scavengers find on their hunts is considered too broken to be used. Down to be used. Most of the time, they're right, but that doesn't mean we'll always be discarding it immediately. Alternatively, teaching the scavengers to perform repairs in the field could decrease the time it takes to raise new support equipment. <sighs> yeah, sounds about right.
Unlocks the decision by weapons from the Van Graffs at risk of alerting the bear. If you want to uh, deploy a proper military force with energy weapons, we need to contact an outside supplier. Fortunately, the Van Graffs are already willing and able to meet our demands. As long as our enemies don't think of trading with an uh, <clears throat> arms dealer, we'll be unmatched in the wasteland. Makes your power armor. Finding complete usable suits of power armor is nearly impossible outside the Brotherhood battlefields. Instead, piecing together broken down shells and raw materials could lead to a greater returning on our scavenger runs. Uh, we're getting cash from leveling up just like our starting generals. Every now and then, a particular scavenger shows great skill or courage in the face of danger. One of them, a particular and enigmatic figure, refers himself only as Scavenger 51. I shouldn't impress the cap oh, leadership capabilities. A promotion might be in order. Mobilizing that's not good. You know what? We're going to do that anyways. I'm not sure it's going to help us out at all, but whatever. You get over here, you get over here. Whatever, if you can't do anything, that's fine. Just hanging out. Here goes Highland Watch. Get in there, come on. Help keep him in place, and... Keep him in place, and... Are you in there yet? Oh my god, you are taking forever. This is sad and wrong. There you go. Should hold. No, we're still getting more army XP. That's what I really care about. Good job. They're still mobilizing. I'm not sure what we could do here about this. Of course, I guess it would make more sense to separate these guys. Whatever. Fangraf shipments. An army without a nation. You think Rika is but a band of pirates, gallywogs, drunks, and horrors? Perhaps, but it could be so much more. The finest military force for the West Coast come together to show the rest of the wasteland what we can do. History calls us villains. The future will call us heroes. Of course it will. Why would they not? of advanced weaponry. Yeah, that's pretty good. We got a lot of equipment, though. Which is why we need to edit our templates. Look at that. Nice. The grid support's very good. I'm done here. Very good. Vacuum tubes, very good. Breakthrough, yeah. Reclamation authority, that's fine. You know, since you're here, you might as well help out. Oh, they took that towel. Eh, whatever. I'm not super worried. Just keep beating them up if you can. Learning from the past. Granite Company wants to work for a force with fusion plants with the best quantum mud pie west of Mississippi. Boom. Had activities. Economic advisors, technocrat, bad memories. Ooh, wow. That's pretty good, actually. I kind of like this person, too. More war support, but I want to wait to get more war support anyways. Alright, so we can actually edit all these templates, which is kind of kind of nice. So, uh, we'll be doing that... Taxing trade, the answer really truly cared about Navarro, but we could. A few roads connect settlements will increase trade, and with more trade comes to more attacks. And the mutant threat. There, to the north are mutants, cannibals, and obviously satanic brotherhood, and the Canadarians. To perhaps secure our perimeter, perimeter, we must use control of the Packers and protect California. Plus, think of all the money a new trade route could bring, of course. Um, interesting. River convoys, which we talked about. Maybe we'll talk about Lower Snake River expansion. Our mercenaries report traders speaking of a variety of exotic tribes located upstream from our current outposts under Oregon's rivers. They talk of men who worship steam, forest men who could walk with beasts, and unholy cannibals driven mad by ancient devices. This seems to be a prime business opportunity. It would be, we would be fools to pass it up, but I think we're going to end it there. We've done very well with Eureka. We're going in a direction I did not plan for us initially to do, but it's fun regardless. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. 
And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with the good old Eureka and hopefully not get discovered yet by the NCR. Thanks for watching. And have a great rest of your day.